I'd like to welcome everybody to May the 15th, 2023 commission, I mean, work session of the Limestone County Commission. Um, under public comment, I know we have one here, Mr. Brian Jones. If you don't mind, step up here, please. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Brian. Uh, in front of you, you're going to see a packet we uh, brought this morning. It has two price quotes uh, prosecuted by Carpel and another one from Spartan Technology, and also the uh, approved abatement strategies. Uh, the county has received approximately 300000 from the opioid settlements. Uh, on page 7 of the abatement, it lists the law enforcement uh, option that we can spend that money on. Uh, we're requesting a one-time appropriation of 100000 to purchase the software. If, if you look at uh, page 12 of Carpel, their price quote is in there. And then on page seven on Spartan, both of them are pretty close in, in range. Upfront cost is right at about 75,000 for uh, Carpel and about 60,000 for Spartan. Uh, we actually are preferring Spartan that has, it has to do with the discovery portal as to how we send the information to the defense lawyers. Um, we're in a situation right now where the grand jury software and the case management software we currently have is failing. And for instance, the last grand jury, we had a problem where the software was, was switching the defendant's name with the victim's names. And we caught that pretty early on and had to continue quite a few of them until till next week. Um, one of the things in this one is, as I've explained before, the way we're funded, um, we started the fiscal year $600,000 upside down, and all the money that we're generating is going to operating expenses and payroll. Part of the money that's coming through, part of these settlements and everything, is this money is coming to the counties to help us uh, address the opioid addiction problem. Um, as you watch on the news, you see the issue of fentanyl. The fentanyl is, is replaced meth, it's replaced cocaine. Most of the cases we're coming in now have some type of fentanyl connection. And one of the big things, not only is this grand jury software going to help us our day-to-day -day operation it's case management software but it also helps us track the kind of cases that are coming in so that way if there's a particular grant that the county needs to apply for um, we'll have the data to, to do that in the, in the opioid lawsuit one of the biggest problems was the fact that the state came to us and said we want you to tell us how many cases are pills you know how many are fentanyl how many are that we couldn't do that and other than go through 2,500 cases a year, one at a time to see where they are. What this software does is it basically runs the operation, it runs all the case management, it runs the grand jury, it does any type of reporting. So like if you call me in a year and say, I wanna know how many fentanyl cases you prosecuted last year, I can hit a button and I can tell you <coughs> in about five minutes. Um, you know, the money that, that has that's come in on this is very restrictive. And so we were asking for an appropriation of the 100,000 which will cover the software, it will cover the storage, because right now we currently are storing 10 terabytes of information, which are all the pending cases and all the new cases that are coming in. Plus it'll allow us a little bit of leeway because I, I'm anticipating we're gonna have to buy new uh, computers as well. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ellen, do we have any more public comments? No further comments. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. And like we've always said, you know, if anybody ever has a public comment or anything and you can't make it to a meeting, you're more than welcome to email it in or get it in to us and we will put it on the record that we have had public comment on other issues. So thank you, everybody. Um, so first on the agenda will be the minutes from May 1st of 2023. Anybody got any discussion with the minutes? All right. Next on here will be the claims in the amount of $1,187,000. $663.29. Anybody got any dispute with any claim? We have no public hearings, resolutions, and orders. First one on here will be to approve a resolution providing the Limestone County participation in the July 21st of the 2023 of 23 on um, back to school sales tax holiday. This is something we do every year. We, we'll do it for severe weather and other things also, but I didn't, has anybody got any discussion with this? All right. Second on here will be to approve a resolution for the chairman of the Limestone County to, to authorize and execute a file and award application and enter into an agreement with Alabama Department of Transportation for aid in financing of a Section 5310 Transportation Assistance Program. Anybody got a discussion with that? 
All right, number three will be to approve a proposed um, uh, revised Title VI program in, in order to um, comply with Title VI federal requirements. And this is something we have done in the past. We're just revising it. Um, it's for ADA stuff, and Drew may need to alleviate on that, do you, Drew? No, it's, we need to have this updated for certain grants that we're applying for. And we have approved one of these in the past. This is just a revised and updated. You had to require to update it every so often. So. All right. Any more discussion with anything there? All right. And the contracts, agreements, and MOUs. It will be to approve the chairman to enter into a contract for a shoulder machine. And I'll kind of brief on this. I'm, I know um, Mark will be talking about it during the um, – in his section of it, what we've got is, is our shoulder machine is gone, it's wore out. We've been borrowing one from the city of Athens for several years. Um, and of course, you know, I'm in the city, I mean, we've kind of, we need we need one of our own anyways. So um, I want to thank the city for letting us use theirs at the time they've used it. And I know Mark will go over the process, we either purchase or lease or rent or whatever, but this is just to be an agreement, whichever we decide today during the work session to be approved to look into a shoulder machine. Anybody got any discussion with that? All right, appreciate y'all. All right, next on here, we have no budget revisions, no merchant purchase, board appointments. We have um, one board appointment here. For, this will be to approve to nominate uh, of Curtis Hollinsworth, Dave Bradford, and Larry Brzezett for the submission to the government as a three candidates. Um, this right here is for the vacant seat of the Board of Alabama Elk River Development Agency. This is up at the rural village, and the way that's structured is they have so many from Limestone County, so many from Lauderdale County, and a mayor has to sit on from each county and all. But um, Mr. Mickey Lay, has he has resigned off the board and is moving into other options in life, and we'll thank Mickey Lay for his time on the board. And we submit them these three names, and they'll pick one of these three to serve on that board. Okay. So anybody got a discussion with either one of the gentlemen on there? Um, and I know that this board, I think it has seven members, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I'm thinking that's right. It may be six, but I know it's six or seven. Anybody got a discussion? Anybody else? I don't like anything with anybody on the board. And while we're on board appointments, there also is a, and Drew is looking at this, there's a spot on the hospital board that we'll have to put somebody on. Um, if anybody's got any names for somebody who might be interested in serving on that. I know that Drew, they sent us a thing saying they needed three names, but Drew was looking to see if, so we got to figure all that out. So I just want y'all be aware of that. So. All right, award of bids. Um, we have one bid here to award. This is for uh, 60 before the building for solid waste. This is from Rocket City Metals Buildings and Carports for $66,100. Um, I may, Mark may want to alleviate on this, but has anybody got any discussion with it? That's just the building, no erection. That, that's, that's, that's that is erected. That's, that is that's erected. constructed. So um, that's that would be going on the slab that, that is up there. They're gonna pull the slab. No, the slab that's existing. existing. It would be. Okay. It would be. Um, it'd be anchored to the slab that's existing. Okay. It was the slab where the old Fred's department store used to sit on. We'll be putting it on the slab where the Fred's department store sat. So, anybody got any more discussion with that? <clears throat> They're going to use this for? This will be a temporary shop for them. So okay. un until we do whatever we're going to do long term, this would be their shop facility. Okay. And this is a metal prefab building that can be moved at a later date. Where our goal is, is when we move someday, we'd love to turn this into a wash base yet or something. Gotcha. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not just for this. I mean, it will be a building that can be moved and put back up okay. at some point in time if we if we'd elected to do that. Or it may be used for storage or maintenance or something after this over with, but I mean, <coughs> just temporary shop building. Anybody else got any more discussion with that? All right, personnel action policy and staffing we have to um, prove to hire Stephanie Elkins as a government accounting position effective May 15th, 2023, and the second one will be to approve to hire Isaac um, Nicholson as a temporary labor and engineering department. I don't know what day he's starting. Does anybody know? Well, anyways, anybody got a discussion with either one of those? Mark, do you know what day Isaac is starting? Oh, um, he'll be starting, uh, I think it's two weeks from now. Okay. I didn't hear Sorry, that. Sorry, I, I apologize. Um, yeah, it, he's he's actually a senior in high school, and he's going to Alabama for civil engineering, and so he's going to assist. Okay. He's actually going to assist in the um, engineering department for uh uh, running rates and checking temperatures and tickets and more kind of along the engineering side of it. So um, he's gonna he's trying he's he'll assist Hunter with a lot of his duties so, during the construction season. 
you know, that's a great program. I know um, Layla up here, was, she came in on the kind of the co-op program, but my son did that one summer. My oldest son, he worked in the engineering department um, with Terry Bob doing estimates and stuff one summer. So. And he learned a lot of experience from that. He was going to school for drafting, and he learned a lot in that. So it's a good program. Anybody got any discussion with either one? Um, we have ser several married increases. I guess ever. I guess a third of the employees was hired sometime this month in times past. So, anybody got any discussion with anybody on the married increases? And you know, I want to thank all of the employees. You know, without us, without them, we wouldn't make it to where we are today. So, anybody got any discussion with anybody? All right, engineer's report, Mark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have six subdivisions for um, y'all's consideration today. Um, Abbey Brook subdivision phase two, this is a major for preliminary approval, creating 30 lots in district two. Um, I believe this should be the south, south of Ed Ray Road, um, uh, west side of Meadows Road. Uh, Kennesaw Creek subdivision phase four, this is a major. Um, it doesn't reflect it on here, but um, it, this should, this without your um, objection, uh, I'd like to make this preliminary and final uh, because they act, this actually was a portion of phase three that was completed. Um, and Drew and I talked about this on Thursday about the best way to handle that. And uh, we had, um, and we, we figured making it preliminary and final, even though they built it according to the construction plans for what was approved in phase three. Um, but they just completed a smaller section when they did phase three. Uh, so that's 46 lots in District 2. This is south side of Nick Davis Road, approximately 1,900 feet west of Jones Road. Uh, Big Creek Home Subdivision, this is a replat of lots 6 and 7. This is a minor for preliminary and final, creating two lots in District 4. Alley Subdivision, this is a minor for preliminary and final, creating three lots in District 1. Uh, Roscoe Subdivision, this is a minor for preliminary and final, creating two lots in District 1. And Laxon Subdivision, this is a minor for preliminary and final, creating two lots in District 2. All right, anybody got a discussion for any subdivision? We need to put final on the second one, right? Preliminary and final. Yeah, yeah like okay. I said, Drew and I had a conversation, and we figured that's probably Derek, the you didn't have any today. Either way. You didn't no, have any? No, I slid out today. I slid out today. Okay. Hmm. Anybody got any more discussion any one of the subdivisions? Um, the shoulder machine, uh, like uh, the chairman alluded to, we, we included that over there to keep from having to, it, depending on how we decide to go, to keep from having to um, amend the, the agenda for the meeting. Um, but the, the situation with the shoulder machine, our old shoulder machine, it, it, it's not really functional anymore. Um, we have been borrowing the cities and we are grateful for that opportunity. Um, but uh, we we can purchase a shoulder machine like what we've been borrowing from the city. Uh, it's a demo machine, so it's about ten thousand dollars cheaper than um, what would be the price if it were considered new. Um, it is a new machine, but they just carried it and let people demo it, um, and so it'd be fifty one thousand dollars to purchase. Um, so if we were to purchase that. I, I, there's been some just in individuals conversations with you guys we've talked about possibly buying that out of ARPA funds we've talked about two or three different things um, but I didn't know this was an opportunity to kind of discuss and figure out what the direction everybody wants to go we can lease a machine that is in the lease fleet um, and it's three thousand dollars a month just under three thousand dollars a month like twenty nine hundred a month I believe it is uh, we can lease it we can lease it for four months, five months, whatever it takes for us to get through our construction schedule and we can turn it back in and either lease or buy later. Um, there is a larger machine that's a self-propelled machine. It's approximately $300,000. Um, I, I looked at it and for us to get a return on that investment is just not, it, it would take us about seven years to get a return versus the output of the smaller machine. By then, we're talking, I mean, for a six, for a six times the cost. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't really, um, it, it doesn't really compute, but um, but that is an option as well. So like I said, there is a, there is a self-propelled machine out there. So, so I was just wanting to get some of your feedback and, and some, some 
what your thoughts were and then if you choose to move forward with either the lease or the um, purchase then that would be the motion we need to make in the meeting if we decide to strike it from the agenda we strike it from the agenda but that was just kind of the thoughts that I wanted to run by you well I would prefer let's just buy one I mean if you got ten we got ten thousand dollars off on a demo one I mean that would be uh my my theory would be that we would own it because you're going to spend fifteen to twenty thousand dollars renting one, and we're not going to have anything to show. We're going to need another one. We're going to need it from now on. It's not like an asphalt season goes all year long, pretty much. So you really can't lease it for three or four months and then expect not to need it in December if you have a pretty week there, you know. So that's my thoughts. But I mean, I don't know. park our old machine, the one that we're not. It's broke. Will it do asphalt and gravel? <clears throat> yes, I mean any of these belted machines will. Um, when you use asphalt through them, there's, there's some extra maintenance that has to be done. The reason why I was asking, you know, we got a lot of roads that needs some shoulder work, and I just thought it. And it may be something that we can patch together, but it's it's just a, it's an old machine. Um, getting parts for it are difficult. Um, we've robbed parts off of a older machine to try gotcha. to try to hold it together. Well, I know the new machine is really not set up. The one y'all been borrowing, it's not set up for asphalt. It's mainly it, for gravel. It, it's not. It's, it's, just it's mainly for gravel. The, the big, the three hundred thousand dollar machine, it's yeah. set up for both. But um, but again, yeah. that's that, that's quite a, a jump in in cost. Yes. Um, for the number of days in a construction season that we use it. Right. Well, just. Machine do dirt if you wanted to do dirt. If you wanted to do dirt, yeah, and gravel dirt. Uh, it would take a it would take a, a sandy gravelly type uh, material, but um, something with a lot of clay, you might not get a very good finish. But it would it would put it out. Um, it just you, you would have to work with some some um, maybe some stopped up screeds and that kind of thing. But but, um, but if you can have a sandy gravelly type material, it it can. So uh, is the thought to to purchase, and if, and if it's purchased, is it? Do you want to? I would say purchase. Okay, and then is it? And then um, which uh, my thought would be either ARPA or um, public building fund would be. Oh, we'd have to do an amendment for that. I mean, uh, we just need to know where to pull that from. But. Six one half does the other. It doesn't yeah. matter. Okay. There. I mean, that doesn't matter. Um, I would say let's just move forward with putting on our purchasing one. And cause we because if we don't do it if we don't look at it now, the problem is we got two or three weeks before you have another meeting. We're paving today. I know we're up in district. We have one, one we have one road that we don't have shoulders yeah, on. We've got to go back to right now. So I mean uh, um, so we're moving we're moving forward with the paving but we're we're keeping our low shoulder signs out. We're gonna have to go back to those. All right, let's just put on there. I mean is everybody fine with putting on there just to purchase one? I'm yeah, I'm fine with just purchasing yeah. okay. All right, we got that. All right, well, I'll let Drew handle that during the... All right, any more discussion with the shoulder machine? Mark, you got anything else? No, um, we are moving forward with paving. Uh, we're on Beat Line Road right now. Um, we did have an issue with our milling machine last week. Um, it was... It was supposed to have been taken care of last week, but the part... Um, didn't get shipped out from the from the part supplier, so we are. They tell us today that the part will be in, so we are we're we're moving forward with what we can do. Um, I think we're finishing Wales Road, um, and then we will. The part's supposed to be. They they tell us the part's supposed to be here today. It was supposed to have been here, I believe, last Thursday, um, and Friday when they didn't show up to put it on, it was. We were told it was because the part didn't actually get shipped. It went through, got put on put on their shipping docket, and didn't get picked up by the shipping company. So, um, so they they sent it over the weekend, and they're supposed to get it today and get it put on. So, um, I will keep you apprised if that if something changes there. All right. Anything else for Mark? Anybody got any discussion? Have you heard anything on our trailer? The, mm, no, the last I, I've been checking with them. Um, they have every, every time I check with them, it's it's still three months out. Okay. So maybe like our part. Maybe like our part. That's what. Yeah, 
So um, it may be that I have to find another option, but um, that one is that one's the state bid yeah. option, and so trying to trying to pur purchase from the state bid, but it's it's been difficult. All right, thank you, Mark. All right, moving on. Um, other business we have to uh, approve um, the designated ARPA replacement um, revenue replacement funds for. Completion of road projects. Anybody got a discussion with that? All right. Next one would be to remove the following from inventory from the sheriff's office to ADE machine. I I think after a period of years they just get so old they have to be discarded, so it's just removed from inventory. All right. I know you might alleviate more on that one. But anyway. All right. Next thing on here will be to amend the uh, 2023 Rebuild Alabama transportation plan and um, Mark may want to leave you on this I know it's I think it's a project in district it's, 3 right? it's district 3's project which was um, Snake Road and Fielding Road we're we're gonna do Huntsville Browns Ferry <coughs> Road so it's replacing Huntsville Browns Ferry Road um, or adding Huntsville Browns Ferry Road in the place of Snake Road and um, Fielding Road all right anybody got any more discussion with that all uh, right, and the fourth thing on here, this is just for these next two items, just for discussion only. Um, I know Commissioner Barksdale Bingo has asked several times about discussion the work session slash commission meeting schedule. Um, this is just time for people to throw out there their thoughts and processes or whatever. Um, I know he's asked this question. Um, me personally, I, I, which I kind of said this in the first, I, I like it would rather be in the afternoon sometimes, you know, because Monday morning everybody's scrambling around trying to get going. but. That's up to y'all. This is just food for thought. Um, y'all can kind of come up with some discussion or whatever. I just put it out there. I know he's asked about it several times. So, anybody got any ideas or anything y'all want to come back with or anything y'all want to talk about today? We're more than welcome to talk about it. So, well, I'll start out. Uh, you know, I guess years ago, or I don't know how many years ago, we had the uh, uh, work session the Wednesday prior to. Uh, Commission meeting on Monday, and and I like that. It gives you time to review what's on the agenda and do any homework that you need to do. I've had several citizens ask me, "Well, I'd like to go to a meeting, but I don't want to take off work." So, my preference and would be to have the uh, work session the Wednesday prior to the Monday commission meeting say at 3.30 in the afternoon, where if folks want to take an hour off from work, they can do that and attend a commission meeting. Now, if y'all want to have it in the morning, I'd probably go along with that, but that's my preference, would be 3 o'clock in the afternoon, just to give people an opportunity to attend the meeting if they wanted to. That's my thoughts. And like I said, this is just for discussion. Thanks. Anybody. If anybody want to come up with something to come back with later or whatever, that was just, I know Commissioner Barksdale had asked about putting it on here, about talking about it. So that's what this is all about. Um, anybody else got any thoughts right now or y'all want to think about it and come back with ideas later or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. No more discussion with that item. Um, I kind of got that out here and open. Um, the second one on, the fifth item on here was, um, I've had several people just ask this question about working 410s where I know we have got a, a solid waste department is working 410s now and uh, you know with the paving schedule and stuff a lot of them they have asked about working 410s you know and I know it's hot out there with them working and stuff um, and I know that productivity time and so that was just thought out here for discussion um, anybody got any thoughts I know I've um, talked with every other county around and some of them are this way some of them's that way um, I know all of Lauderdale, all of, I think Lauderdale County is 410. I know Morgan County is 410s. Madison County is 410s. Um, you know, with the construction side of things. So, I mean, that was just kind of well, thrown out there. So, there's I, some productivity increases, um, and you, you, can, you can research and, and find that out. But, I mean, just kind of the, the basic logic behind it is, is you lose. You lose a startup and a shutdown period, and you lose a, a lunch break that you're that, so that you're gaining that back into hours of productivity. Um, so there there are some benefits on that side in addition to morale for employees. 
um, they're, they're I, I used to kind of have the thought that, well, it's, it doesn't, doesn't cost anybody anything, but there are some kind of hidden costs. So, I mean, just to kind of make that known too, I mean, there's, um, if there is, if you have a rain day, uh, then you've lost 5% additional productivity because instead of it being 25, instead of it 20% of your work week, it's 25% of your work week that's gone. So there's kind of a hidden cost there. There's um, uh, holidays, if you have a, a Friday holiday, um, that that you guys uh, approve, then you'd still pay that holiday. So there's essentially kind of straight time overtime cost in it. So there there are positives and negatives to doing it, but um, I think I still think it, it's a fairly cost effective way to gain productivity and gain morale. But those are those are just kind of my my thoughts. So. Um, but y'all, y'all ask any questions, whatever. We may not have the answers, but uh, we can find some answers or, or whatever. This would be a good time to 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 just at least bring that out. So, Mr. Chairman, you talking about four tens for in the districts and engineering, or you talking about four tens county as a whole? Well, it would probably work. The, I mean, it, what the idea was workforce field, you know, field force, you know. I mean, yeah, and. Um, which would be districts and, and engineering. engineering, which now you could go to a hybrid. There's some people that go to a hybrid type work office schedule too, you know, that has longer. And I know Joseph's sitting in here. Um, you know, there's some schedules that's where people do it to where they work longer hours and part of the shift works Monday, part of them work Friday, and they, they rotate it like that. You know, there is, um, and that way, you know, you hear the call all the time, well, y'all close at 4.30 and I can't get there till 5.00. So you know, if you if you done it into the where you built it into that, you know, you could you could be open a, you know a couple of hours longer. It's high, you know, and there, there's different there's all kind of schedules to this how it could work. It was just a, it's just a conversation piece. I mean, that's what it is right now. I mean, it's a, um, you know, I just know that there's been several people reached out to me and asked me why we don't do it, and I said, well, all I can do is discuss it with y'all gentlemen. That's all I can do. Um, and it's a it's a whole holy discussion issue. And I know it has pros and cons both ways. It's not a, it's no perfect scenario in, in any situation, you know. Well, I know in the summer it worked good for the paving crew to get a couple more hours, but now in the wintertime, you know, it's, it's not really going to be a whole lot of, there will be the benefit a whole lot in the winter. We don't. Well, I, I know that in a previous job that I had, we, we worked four tens in the summer and then in the winter went back to a five eight, but then it actually became to where it was, you could get, your entire work day. I mean, when, once you get on site, you could work the entire period of daylight hours. So we stayed four tens through the entire year because of because of that. So we would actually you you'd do all your stuff on the yard, gathering all your your all your equipment and everything that you needed. And when you showed up to the site, you'd be getting daylight, and then you'd work till it got you'd work till it got dark, and then you would be do you'd be doing everything on the yard in the dark and then you'd get you'd actually utilize your entire daylight period and so we we found that that was that was beneficial so we stayed at a full 410 um uh throughout the year so so there are some benefits even in the winter staying 410 uh 410 so you can utilize your full daylight hours and like i said there's nothing we're here to vote on today it's just That's a discussion, right. it's just a discussion. I mean, it's just a discussion. So. And like I said, any questions? I mean, I know Drew and I have talked about it, and that there's probably some, there's probably some things on the personnel side that have to be considered, and and those kinds of things. So any questions you have, we can make a note and try to get you an answer. But, and, um, so. I mean, how they build time? You know, we do it on eight hour days. Your vacations to a yeah. ten hour day. <clears throat> yeah. Just and, two hours or something. Yeah, and uh, and what a lot of people have done in the past is is you actually end up with a lot of people doing everything on Fridays, and they take a three day weekend or something to that effect, and they end up they end up actually building more time than they than it would have actually cost them, just because they don't have they don't, they have a built in day that they can that they can use. Um, so it, it, as far as personnel goes, that's that actually works out in favor of the employees what what i've seen in the past but i mean it, it it everybody figures figures out when to schedule their doctor's appointments and all those kinds of things and realize that they can do that without burning time but but yeah as far as how the time works that's something i think what drew and i could talk about and look into the 
so if you're working a four a ten hour day, how does how does holidays work? How do how does the the um, vacation and sick time work? And like I said, this is just a discussion. I mean, this is what a workstation is kind for. Just talk about things. That's right. Um, anyways, anybody else got anything else with it? Any more discussion? Any other questions? Any other questions? That we can be we can be researching. <laughs> and I would like the four tens if we had enough people where we could you know shift our off days where you covered Monday through Friday, but we shut down at two thirty on Thursday. You know, it, it's a long time to money for what pops up from time to time. So that's that, that, that's on the side I see to it. And, and and that kind of goes. I, I didn't mention that kind of in the hidden costs. I mean, it does mean there's one more day on the weekend that there might be a call out that could be overtime. So, I mean, that is that is one kind of in those, like I said, kind of hidden costs. I mean, we we figure we figure 40 hour weeks for every employee. So whether they get 40 hours in four or 40 hours in five, but that that is kind of in that hidden cost there to where. Uh, that is one more day that you could potentially have a, a overtime call out. That's my thing. I just hate to be down on a Friday. But, you know, that's you know, that, my that's part of well, I mean, that's a, like I said, this is a. I mean, a lot of you court. I think courts got to where they're right, Brian. Where they don't hardly ever they don't hardly ever do court on Friday much anymore, do they? It just depends. Like if we're having a jury trial to roll over, but by and large, most of the stuff's done by, by you know, Fridays. Like I said, this is just a conversation. This is just something that was been asked of me, and I, and the, as a, as a duty, I told him I would discuss it. So, I mean, um, any questions you guys have? I think Drew and I have been talking about this for a while, but any questions you guys come up with, let us know. Because, uh, I mean, it's, I, I think that we the these, a different work schedule is becoming more the norm than a Monday through Friday and there's 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 reasons for it. There's been a lot of studies and there's been a lot of things about the um, about your workforce and productivity and morale that you gain instead of doing just your traditional Monday through Friday. So um, there there uh, there are some positives and some benefits t instead of just saying, well that's the way we've always done it. Well you, you can fall back on that, but there are some there are some positives and negatives. I mean, there are some positives of, of looking at at a change, and it's and it's this is workforce wide. This isn't just a limestone county thing. I mean, y'all y'all probably noticed that there's there's more and more people on Highway 72 on Fridays. Well, why is it that Fridays there people are on Highway 72? Well, it's because there's there are more people that are only they're they're doing a four day work week, and so there's more people with with leisure time on Friday. So they 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 clog our roadways up, but um, which makes working on Fridays more difficult when you're in the road. I mean, so there are like I said, this is a workforce wide discussion. I think that's been going on for the last several years. So it like I said, that just something to keep in mind, and any questions you have feel free to bring them up to us and we'll see if we can get you an answer. Anybody else got any more discussion? Well, if not, we will recess. We had no executive session and we will recess until um, 9.49. Let's just say 9.50. It makes it easier to